I'm so sorry about the echo. It will just last for about the first eight minutes, then it will be gone. I think I finally found the correct setting, so this should be the last time it's a problem. Thank you for your patience. Hello, 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 and welcome to Foodcraft with Goosey Games. Yeah, that's the new name I have for the series. My friend Talking Dog came up with it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, so this week, well, I'm going to record this first part because this is going to need to cook for about two hours by itself before I do anything else, and I didn't want to have that all on the live stream. So I'm going to record this a little bit first and then catch up once once we're ready to do some more. Um, so this week, in preparation for St. Patrick's Day this month, I'm going back to my Canadian heritage. My grandmother is, my maternal grandmother is Canadian. She's from Newfoundland. And so we're going to make corned beef and cabbage, otherwise known as a jigs dinner, which I think I looked up the reason for that term, but I don't remember it, so I'll look it up in between and uh, let you know when we get to the live stream. Jigs dinner is a traditional meal commonly prepared and eaten on Sundays in many regions around the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. Corned beef and cabbage was the favorite meal of Jigs, the central character in the popular long-running comic strip Bringing Up Father by George McManus and Zeke Zeekly, after whom the dish is likely named. I'll also explain what corned beef is, because maybe you've heard of it. I mean, everybody's heard of corned beef and cabbage. This is corned beef. This is a corned beef brisket. It's in the packaging. Uh, if you buy it, like just the hunk of meat from the butcher, not this prepackaged stuff, um, it's also known as salt beef, or you can use salt riblets. You're going to need to soak it overnight to get rid of the excess salt and change out the water, but with this package daily, you don't need to do that, but you do need to cook it a long time. So, we're also going to add as part of the, the traditional part of the dinner is a peas pudding which has another name you may be more familiar with. I'll give you a hint. Some people like it hot, some people like it cold, and some like it in the pot nine days old. So this is a pudding bag. This is what we're going to make the peas pudding in. And I have here a cup and a half of dried split peas. The recipe calls for yellow peas, but I can only find green. I figure the color probably doesn't matter. I hope. So we're going to put that right into the pudding bag here. You know what? Let me get smart about this. Show you a little trick here. There. That'll hold the pudding bag up while I fill it with peas. I soaked these peas and then I let them sit and now they're kind of stuck together. You want to, when you buy dried peas or beans or other legumes, you want to rinse them before using them because there might be uh, grit or leftover bits of husks or other things that maybe you don't want in there. So you just want to rinse them off, get them clean, and we'll put them right there in this pudding bag. Uh, if you don't have a pudding bag, you can use a clean tea towel or a thin dish towel and kind of turn it into a bag. But the idea is it needs to be, you need to tie it, or you can use a uh, cheesecloth, but you need to tie it tightly. Otherwise, you don't get pea pudding, you get pea soup. So whatever you do, just tie it tightly with some clean string. Uh, do not use... If you use dental floss, you know, that's food grade, but you don't want to use the minty stuff because it will flavor your food. <laughs> um, so this is going to go right in the pot with the corned beef and the vegetables and everything. And all the, the juice and the flavor from the meat cooking in that broth is going to flavor these peas and just give them a really wonderful flavor. And when it's done, We'll take it out of the bag and we'll mash it up with some butter and some pepper and it will just be really delicious. 
So we're going to tie that good and tight here. Just like that. All right, and that is ready for us to go. Set the side. Now, I'm going to put the corned beef into the pot. Isn't this pot beautiful? I got that from my grandma. So I'm going to open this package up. And now when you buy like a corned beef brisket, like I said, like not this prepackaged kind that comes with juices and the spice packet and everything. Uh, if you get one with a bone in it, that's really good for flavor. That'll flavor your broth. Look at all the ew, meat juices. Mmm, so tasty. Put that right in the trash. Now this was supposed to come with a spice packet, but I think it's underneath. <laughs> I lost it. There it is. So this is just some, some peppercorns, and I'm actually not all sure what is in there. Let's see if the ingredients say. Nope. We're just going to cut that right open. Put it in there. I think it has like um, bay leaves and mustard seed. Anyway, it's really good stuff. It'll make it very flavorful. Let me just wash this juice off my hands. Gross. Got to keep things sanitary in the kitchen. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. There you go. Nice piece of bloody meat with all the spices on it. We're going to stick that pudding bag right in there. And then we're going to cover it with water. This is my, uh, this is my Hobbit popcorn bucket I got at the, when I went to go see the first movie in the theaters. Whoop! Ah, splashing! Gross. We're a little snowy. We're just going to cover that all with water. Just like that. We're going to put that on our hot stove here. And get that boiling. And in about two hours, we will come back and add all of the lovely vegetables, including the mysterious turnip. So, I will see you then. Alrighty. Hello, 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 and welcome to Goosey Games. I have had the corned beef and peas pudding boiling for about two hours. And so now we are ready to add all of these lovely vegetables. Alright, so yes, yeah, so I recorded a little bit earlier today because it was going to take two hours. There wasn't any way I was going to make you guys sit through watching a pot boil, <laughs> basically. So you're welcome. But in here we have a three pound corned beef brisket and a peas pudding in a pudding bag. And so those have been boiling, steaming for about two hours. Now we're going to add all these lovely vegetables for to make our jigs dinner, which is a traditional... Uh, Irish Canadian Irish American uh, dinner like a like a, like the British have their roast dinner and the, the Canadians especially Newfoundland this is very uh, traditional in Newfoundland which is where my grandmother is from they have their jigs dinner so we are going to start by adding this lovely lovely cabbage. We're just going to cut it in some wedges and just put it right in the pot. It's 
go ahead and take this lid off while we're adding the vegetables. Mmm, look at all that steam, yes! I wish you guys could smell this because this smells amazing. Yeah, yeah, hi talking dog. Okay, on it thinks you do not have flash. On my screen, the picture looks frozen. So I hope it's running for you guys. I really, really, really hope. Um I forgot what I was gonna say next. Oh yeah, so the part I recorded earlier today is we put in the corned beef and the peas pudding. And the recipe calls for medium head of cabbage. I ended up with kind of a small one, but that's okay. And so we're just going to put those right in there carefully. All the vegetables have been washed and scrubbed and peeled as necessary. There we go. Lovely cabbage. Ah! Yep. Splashed hot water on myself. That's okay. I'm fine. Then we are going to, oh, I forgot to peel the turnip. Where's my peeler? I don't know. There it is. So we're just going to peel this turnip. So if you're like me, it was probably, oh, you know, a while in your life before you saw turnip in person. When I bought these at the grocery store, the cashier had to ask me what it was. <laughs> this is what a turnip looks like, folks. <laughs> it's a very, very starchy uh, root vegetable. Um, oh gosh, I had a, like a list of stuff to talk about. I knew I should have written it down. Oh, I guess I can talk about corned beef. I've had a couple of people ask me what corned beef is. Uh, it is a preserved meat product. It's also known as, as salt beef. So it's salt cured beef brisket. Or you can also get salt riblets is, is another form of it. And the reason it's called corned, it doesn't have anything to do with corn, like American corn, and it doesn't have anything to do with any other kind of grain, and it doesn't even have anything to do with peppercorns, really. Um, it's called corned beef because it's preserved with uh, rock salt. Woo! That was a trick. I meant to do that. Yes, I did. Uh, and so rock salt is very, very coarse salt. So they're corns of salt. The, the word corn meaning, you know, tiny niblet. There was a time in where corn in the English language referred to any kind of a grain, uh, which, is, which is why we use it for our yellow corn, like maize, but it also used to refer to wheat and everything else. So there we go, lovely peeled turnip. Slice that up, put it in there, make sure the fingers are out of the way. Uh, but yes, for, so for those of you who didn't know what corned beef is, that's why, it's because it's preserved with coarse salt. In goes that turnip. Very good. Should I kind of put the second one in there? Eh. See, the recipe calls for one large turnip or two medium turnips, and I don't know if this is a medium or a large because they were all the same size at the grocery store. But, hey Danny, hey turtle, I see you. Yeah, sorry, I don't know about the feet. How's the sound? Am I echoing today? Because I really hope not. I think I found the setting that fixed that. I think I'll go ahead and put this other turnip in there. Turnips are good.
Yay, no echoing. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm also using my brand new camera that I bought, so I'm no longer relying on the laptop camera, which is a happy thing for everybody, I think. I can have the laptop off to the side. I don't know if you can tell, but this picture is a lot clearer. You can see all the much more high def. Sound old when I say that. <laughs> ah! There we go. Flipping turnips again. If I knew how to juggle, I'd go for it. But I don't. But anyway, yeah, the picture's a lot better, right? Yeah, the camera is awesome. I'm so excited that I have it. It was totally worth the money. Um, I even got it on sale, so it was like, it was really great. And the the micro the attached microphone is a lot better. Also, the sound is a lot clearer. I like it a lot. So we're doing some nice thick slices of turnip. Carefully. There we go. All the turnip in there. We're going to add some carrots. We're just going to chunk them up real nice. They don't have to be small little slices or anything. Um, let's see, yeah, so the reason that I know this recipe, this isn't actually my first time making a Jigs dinner, I've made this before is because it's a like I said it's a traditional food a traditional dinner in Newfoundland Canada that's their easternmost province it's an island in the Atlantic what's kind of funny is that I, it seems like more people have heard about Nova Scotia than Newfoundland and Nova Scotia is actually much smaller and just to the south of Newfoundland but oh and it is pronounced Newfoundland it's not Newfoundland it's not Newfoundland it's Newfoundland. Understand, rubber band? That is where my... My grandmother's family is from. So I am one quarter Newfie. And she has made uh, this dinner for us before. That's, that's where I first had it and fell in love. I thought it was delicious. So when I grew up, decided I was going to learn to make it. And it is actually just really easy. I mean, you basically put uh, stuck to the knife. <laughs> Get off. Um, you basically put the meat and the peas pudding in there, and you let it boil, and then you add the vegetables, and you let it boil, and then when it's done you have this lovely boiled dinner which you know doesn't sound terribly appetizing but trust me you guys have got to taste this stuff the corned beef has this incredible flavor that just flavors all of the vegetables in there and then you eat it with uh i like it with yellow mustard and you can add bread and butter pickles and i have a lovely let me show you i bought a lovely loaf of uh, irish soda bread I'm going to toast and butter and eat with it. And, uh, well, this is a lot of food for one person, but I'll invite my brother over and <laughs> feed him. We'll have leftovers tomorrow for our Sunday dinner. It'll be great. So we have all the vegetables in the pot. Let me just tilt that to show you. So that's why I have such a huge pot, is because there's a lot in there. Oh, and I somehow got the burner crooked. Hold on. Come 
on. Oh, this is going to be bad. There we go. Mm, burning rubber. Very nice. Okay, we're going to add some more water to cover everything out of my Hobbit popcorn bucket. This is a lot of food. I might want to find a, <laughs> a family in my neighborhood to share it with. So, I'll put the lid back on and get it boiling. And that is all there is to it. Much easier than those complicated wonton burgers. So, how about I get to some Minecraft and play while we let this stuff cook. We're going to check it in about half an hour to see... You basically just cook it until the vegetables are done to the way you want them. So let's let's go 25 minutes. So, okay, first thing I want to show you guys, I'm kind of excited about my new skin. Looky here, it's me. There's my apron and my purple shirt. Da da da. -da. What do you think? Oh, I didn't mean to take a screenshot. I meant to do that so you can see me. Yeah, I'm so cute. Woo! All right. <laughs> Enough of that nonsense. Let's put my armor back on. Okay, ooh, it's nighttime. Let's sleep. Don't want to be messing with any monsters. We are we are back on my realm. I've made some progress with some things. I'm excited to show you guys. We're going to take uh, the warping shortcuts, though, because I kind of lose patience walking back and forth with everything. You know, I can't hear my sound too good. Music off, weather off, hostile creep. Oh, we want that back up. Uh, blocks. Move that back up. Friendly creatures can stay. Master volume. There we go. That's better. We're going to hop to my villager castle. Where I have been... Oops. That's what I want. Making villagers! Yee! Hi, guys! So, I don't have, you know, like a village for them yet, but I am making villagers. And I'm even doing it, I'm even doing it the, the slow way. Well, it's sort of the slow way. See, the problem is, is I don't have the time to sit around waiting for villager zombies to show up, so I went into creative and I gave myself a stack of eggs so that I could make villager zombies and then use potions and apples to turn them into villagers. Did I have one in here? Yay, he's all better. Hi. We cured him of his zombiness. So let's give him let's give him a way out. And then he can come in here. Okay. So, my village. Now, I do want to show uh last time I did a stream, I showed some of the stuff that other people have been working on. So I want to show off some more of that. Uh, my friend Ten Can, the world is not loading. North Road, yes. Um, isn't a huge fan of playing survival, and since, well, he's the only one regularly playing on here now, I went ahead and let him loose with some creative and so he's just been building stuff no this isn't no maybe this is the way i want to go uh so he's been building some stuff and i'm gonna go check it out and show you what he's been building walking down the road
don't think this is the right road. Did I go the wrong way? I probably did. Well, that was fun. Let's, yeah, I'm not seeing it. I was certain it was a lot closer to spawn. Let's run the other way. <laughs> Oh, you see that? I spy something yonder. There it is. Check it out. Friend Tencan here has built an airship. How awesome does that look? He also sort of started a house but didn't really put a roof on it. But you know, who need roof who needs roofs when you're in creative mode, right? Go. See? It's unfinished. Ouch. Okay, that was loud. Here's where a creeper blew up. I don't hear this water boiling yet. I'm going to turn up the uh, heat just a little bit. All right. I did add a lot of stuff. There's a lot of water, so it's probably taken a while to, to heat back up. That's okay. It's got this great floating tower. Here's the library floor, decorated with many very large paintings. There's a great light switch here. There's the door. Oh, I almost fell off. Oh, here's bedrooms. One giant donut-shaped bedroom, I guess you call it dorm room is probably more fitting with that many beds. Unless you're a person, you know, who likes a different bed for every day of the month. Here we are at the airship. Oh, such a magnificent view. Check out the, uh, from that side. Now let's go and oh let's check out the captain's cabin right there. Very nice. Ch nothing in the chests. That's fine. Let's check out the hold. Go. He's got this great you know usable hold here, some really great portholes. And in here, in this locked door, there's no way in, is the treasure. These, uh, this might be a pirate ship. Run away. So, and I think he also built some stuff on the south road. So we're going to go check that out. Do, 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 do. Close, the, close the doors behind. Whoa! Ow. Folks gotta watch out. That first step is a doozy. That's right. I grew up watching Looney Tunes. Run down the south road. Check out this what did he call it? A desert outpost? Something like that? That he built. I saw when he first started it, so I haven't yet seen the finished product, so I'm kind of excited to check it out. 
It looks good. So, roof pig. Let's see. Ten Cans Desert Way Station. Oh, maybe stepped on that. It's a great view of spawn there. Oh, I see it can go in either door. There it is. This is nice. Wow. It's a workshop down there. Deep well. Well, skeletons somewhere. I don't see them though. Let's see. Deep well. Oh, very deep well. Holy crow. Is there water at the bottom? I can't see. Hmm. Well, we'll leave that closed. Maybe I'll jump down it for fun <laughs> in a minute here. Here we go. Barracks and gardens. Kitchen and pens. And then up here. Let's go up here first. What are all those pigs doing up there? Alright, here we go. Warning. Lava defense system. Ooh. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Right above the entrance. Check it out. Wow. I'm kind of scared to turn it on. Will that mess with the, the pressure plate? I don't want to wash that away. That's pretty cool. And up here is... Oh, more signs. To the south, Goosey's Castle Village. Far to the south, Goosey's Homestead. That's right. To the west, Talking Dog's Underground Farm. Hey, we'll have to check that out next. Show everybody what you've been up to. Danger Lava Storage. Gotcha. Not touching that. To the north, Spawn Nexus. Further north, Ten Cans Crummy Cave. <laughs> Alright, nice defenses. Let's jump down here. Let's check out the workshop. Oh, very nice. I like the, uh, the beams. Well, let's see if he left anything behind. Oh, just some coal. That's cool. Okay, not much down here. That's all right. Barracks and gardens. Whoa. Oh. Cool, cool. Check that stuff upstairs. Oh, nice. Some beds. I don't see any gardens yet. Here's the barracks part. Let's see into the courtyard. Nice. balcony. Hey, Ten Can, there's no gardens up here. You lied. False advertising. Did I miss any ladders or anything? There's a grumbly noise in the stream. You sure that's not me grumbling because I can't find any gardens? Eh! Open doors. Kitchen and pens. meats. Oh, wow, look at all the meat. Dang, if you're traveling around and you need food, this is the place to come. You can cook it up yourself. Produce. Very nice. And up here. Is Escaping Piggies. There's one named Sherlock. I hope he doesn't jump off. pig named Sherlock. I don't know why you're... How do I get him in here? I need, I need carrots, right? Let's go down and get some carrots. Since they're here for us to use. Whoops. Didn't want to put that in there. Just want one, just one carrot. My axe. I'll leave a space for that fence post I'm about to break. All right, here, piggy, piggy, piggy. Come off the ledge. Oh, an engine? That's probably because I'm right next to the fridge. You're probably hearing the the fridge fan. 
You piggy, 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 piggy. Well, Sherlock, you dummy. Get in here. Well, Tin Can, if your pig dies, it's not going to be my fault. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, we don't want the other pigs to fall either. So, sorry. I can't. Where did it go? Did you guys see that? I placed that fence and it disappears and it's not in my inventory anymore. Uh, okay, well, don't tell Ten Can I was never here. Oh, there it is again. Okay, that was weird. And it just did it again. All right. We have a mysterious disappearing fence and a stubborn pig. Come on! Oh, brother. Let's go get another carrot. Maybe if, maybe if we make him fall in love, he'll come in. Get a third one just for good luck. Right? Three carrots are good luck, right? Whoa! Okay. Oh. No! Did he already fall off? He did. Oh, stupid pig. Well, you guys are my witnesses. I tried. Let's breed these guys. Make a baby piggy anyway. There we go. The baby piggy. I don't know how to get Sherlock up there now. Where are you, pig? Here, piggy, 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 piggy. Maybe I can lure him into the courtyard. Hey, there you are. Come here. No, okay, at least you'll be safe in here and not jump off any ledges. Great. Oh, it looks like... Oh, I can go up here, too. What's up here? It says to garden. Oh, there's the garden. Well then, let's go check out the garden. Ah, oh, how nice. Carrots and wheat. No idea where that skelly is. Well, Ten Can, this is pretty cute. I like it. What else did you... Did you say you built some more stuff? Oh, I forgot. He's not even here. Huh. I think he said he built some more stuff to the south, so we're gonna we're gonna head south and see what we can find. Oh yep, lava defense. There it is. Yikes. Okay. Southward ho. Oh, right, we were going to check out Talking Dog's place. Since that's right here. Splash. Oh, and there's the timer. We got to go test those veggies. Let's pop out of that. Switch the camera back. Let's go see how things are doing. Okay, turn that timer off. Whoa, look at that steam. Mmm, smells good. No, those vegetables are still hard. We're going to turn that up carefully. Let's 
set the timer for another 25 minutes. There we go. A little drink of water. Plug my headphones back in. Ooh, I left them near the uh, the vent on my computer, and they're all warm now. Ugh. Whoa, somebody's in here. Who's? Who's in? Hi. <laughs> Instead of watching this. Oh, see you, Danny. Thanks for watching. Say hi to the internet. You're on TV. <laughs> Let's get down here before anything kills us. Oh, no. Okay, it's noisy in here. That's because Talking Dog has this fantastic place. And he, whoa. And here are all of the chickens in the world. And a, holy crow, a lot of cows. Wow. Whoa, oh dear, pot's boiling over. Ah! Turn it down, turn it down. Yikes. Woo! That was exciting. Should settle down in a second. I turned it down. <laughs> Them's the hazards. On this side, there, oh. Are your sheep supposed to be out of the pens like that? Do I have any wheat? I don't have any wheat. So all these color like it's got the colors on the on the ceiling and the walls so you can tell who's supposed to be where. Oh nice. Nice water doors. I like. But yeah, your your brown sheep definitely got out. Oh, they're fine. Okay, that's good. Gucci, the matter of the way, go. Oh, and here's the nether portal room. Very nice. We're not going to go in there. And then this glass. Isn't this fantastic? You can just look down here and see all the levels. We're going to. We can take the ladder, but we're going to take the stairs. Here's this underground farm. Is that a... No, that's not a pressure plate. Cactus and melons. Is that a pressure plate? What does it do? Let's see. Nope. I thought it was an auto harvest or something. That would have been cool. Cocoa beans. Some wheat. Some taters. Netherwort. Carrots. I really like this setup. It's very organized and classy looking. Okay, no more stairs down. Oh, there's the stairs down. Do, 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 do. Ah, storage and workshop. How lovely. Okay, I say lovely. I helped design this. Using the nether brick was my idea. <clears throat> and he liked it. So I'm taking credit. Enchanting nook. Ooh, spying on your enchantments. Brewing? What you got brewing over here? Awkward potion. It doesn't do nothing. Oh, nice infinite spring. 
I like the columns made out of the workbenches. That's, that's kind of cool. Alright, oh, and it goes down farther still. Ooh. What is this? Hello, Enderman. I want your pearl. Come to me. Alright, I'm gonna make you mad. Hey, come here. Ah, oh, no pearl. Cheapskate. This is kind of a cool pattern. I like it. And this goes up to... Oh, a tree farm. Oh, I see. Oh, I think that's going to be very nice. I like that a lot. And then down here is the bottom of the hole. Cool. Let's take the shortcut up the ladder. Oh, this ladder goes far down. What's down here? Let's go find out. I like to explore, can you guys tell? Oh, the mining. Ooh, Ooh you want to go deeper? Where's the TNT up here? The storage work, work store. I can, I can climb ladders. Yes, I can. One too far. I mean, heck yeah, I want to blow stuff up. In the random box on the left. some help. <laughs> Oops. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'll live, he says. Okay, you're gonna have to remind me how you did this. So that you have kind of a controlled blast. Oh, he needs some wood. Wait. Go down like this. Oh, sweet! Talking Dog's gonna join us. And we're gonna do some drilling. Awesome. It's after the tree farm. I wonder... I mean, he's got a pretty sweet setup here. He's got all the necessities. Oh, that's right, he said the living quarters were going to be down further. Down far enough that you couldn't hear the chickens. <laughs> it's true, if you're living right next to the animals, it can get... That noise can get pretty annoying. Oh, hey, I'm hungry. I'm hungry in real life, too, and I'm sitting next to this gorgeous smell coming from my stove. There he is! Hi! So, 
of here. Hello, webs. This is Talking Dog. I have a TNT down here. I guess he's gonna get more. I will get down blocks for making the staircase, yes. The achievements. I made a hole for you. So, you see what he's doing? He's just breaking the, uh, like a cross shape around where he's gonna put the TNT. And that will kind of control uh, the blast. So, It'll make more of a square shape, I think, is the idea. I'm gonna watch from a safe distance way up here. There he goes! Boom! If you're just trying to drill stuff, you know, TNT can save you a little bit of. bit of time. Am I using my... No, unbreak one is good. I just didn't want to be using my silk touch. Oops. Oh, no! Here comes another boom! Boom! Yeah, that's how you drill with TNT. That's how he's done this entire hole from the be from the beginning. Out. I fall down. Fire in the hole! Boom! That boom is so impressive with my headphones on, let me tell you. Oh no, Miyaki is dying again! He must be at the warp hub. He's getting all these books and quills. Better than nothing, I guess. It's true. Yes! By the smell, I think at least the carrots are done. Got about ten minutes. Actually, if it's smelling done, it might be done. So let's go down here and check it out. Oh, yep, there's his mine. 
cool beans. Gonna check the food. Be right back. Disconnect. Switch. What you guys see? All right. Should be back here. I'm gonna take off. You can see all the steam. Mm. Actually, I don't know if you can see the steam. You can't see the top of the pot. Let's. Oops. Lift this up a little bit. You can see all the steam. So good. Here we go. Oh, just boiling away. Smells so good. Turnips are done. Cabbage is done. Potatoes and carrots. Mmm. Carrots need a little more time. Uh, so it's got eight minutes to go. So we'll just let it go, and then, and then it will be done. So let's go back to the game. There we go. We have returned. Apparently he just filled that full of TNT. Awesome. We're already near bedrock. Well, yep, we are. Sweet. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> we should use... the dark oak glitch. Make a void hole. Ah, They fixed the glitch. But that was such a fun glitch. There used to be this glitch with bedrock where You could like, if you spawned a dark oak right above it, or right under it, or something, anyway, because of the way it spawned, it would sometimes take out bedrock. Okay, thanks for jumping on. Um... Anyway, if he really wants a void hole, I can do that in creative later, I guess. Oh, he's going to want to light this up so he doesn't get mob spawning. The night time. There we go. It's better. So, 
was a fun little tour of what everybody's building. I think, uh, Climb all the way up. We are now it's there's other people on the server now, so my having a bed will not do any good. So we have entered the danger zone. But let's go ahead and run back to the village. Nice system. Good randomization. Because it is looking really good. We're going to have to back, come back and check that out once he's got the trees there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, random looks. In, in Minecraft. Oh, zombies. Ooh. Oh, I got somebody in rink chat. I can't see what you're saying because my window's partially blocking it and there's zombies all around. Let me get somewhere safe and I'll come look. Ah. Safety. All right, I pulled that wall up. Whoops. I should just make a gate, shouldn't I? Oh, I'm gonna cough. Hold on, excuse me. <coughs> okay, I don't know if that muted it or what. I hope it did. I have some wood. Well, that's enough wood for a gate, I think. There, a little birch gate. Got my my own trees growing. I built this whole place, and I'm here. You want to go inside? Let's open up that gate for you. There you go. Feel better. Now, do we want to make more, or should we just let them breed at this point? I'm going to make more, because it's fun and exciting. And scary. I might need to make more potions, though. Pretty sure. I want to have those ready. And golden apples. Oh. And I have forgotten what a weakness potion requires. It's a fermented spider eye, right? I think I think it's an awkward potion with a ferment so we need netherwort and fermented spider eye and there's all my glass bottles. Oh, it's a splash potion, so I don't get those back. Oh, we have one. Okay, yay. And we have a golden apple. Great. Let's put some of this random stuff we don't need anymore in, in there. Uh, that in there. Put that in there. Bring... No, we want blocks on the bar. We make some zombies! Yes! We make some zombies and then cure them into villagers. Because we could just wait around for zombies to show up, but quite frankly, I don't have the patience for that. Oh, holy cow, that's loud. 
Oh, and the timer is going off, so we're going to go back and check the food again. Which I think it might be done. So. But, yes, yes, shut up. There we go. Come on, carrots. Oh, fork tender. Yes, sir. All right. We are going to carefully turn that off. I'm going to use my hot pads. Let me give you guys a really good look in here. You know what? Maybe I'll move the camera. That seems safer. There. That's what that looks like. That's the... This is the top of the pudding bag. We're going to pull that out first in just a second while we wait it for it to cool off a little. Uh, okay, there's the bowl I had for it. I'm use my tongs and just pull that right out. There's a peas pudding in there. I'm just going to put it in that bowl. Actually, let's put it in the strainer because that's soggy. We'll just let it strain right into the bowl there. This back down. And the rest of this, let's see if we can get a plate, pull that beef out so I can give you guys a look at the finished product. It's all the way down. See that cabbage is just falling apart. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's so good with mustard. Let's get our meat fork. I used it earlier to move the beef around when it was raw, so I'm just going to wash it real quick. Use that to pull out the cabbage, too. There we go. Lovely. It's blocking the light. There we go. Okay, I need to put that down a little bit more even, don't I? So you can see the plate now. Okay. So I can dig in here the meats at the very bottom. There we go. Big beautiful hunk of corned beef. So tender. Now make it pretty. Let's get some of these carrots out there. We'll get some. Well, oh, those turnips are really soft. Holy crow. Some lovely turnip. Where's the potatoes? Some potatoes. There we are. We get out our pickles. Well, it's, we still have to deal with the. Uh, oh, I didn't have the lid on that pickle jar. We're gonna taste this just a little bit because I want to taste it. There's what it looks like on the inside when it's cooked. And then we'll deal with the peas pudding. Just a... I'm going to burn my tongue, but it'll be worth it. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. That is so good. You guys don't even know. Mmm. There's our picture. Do that for our screenshot. Oh, 
All right. Mmm, that is tasty. Mmm, that's hot. Okay. All right, we let that drain a bit. That bowl is hot now. I'm going to untie this carefully because it is hot. That bag is full of steam. water has made the knot all tight. There's a fork. I haven't actually done the pudding part of this recipe before. So, aha. This is my first time working with the pudding bag. I think it worked pretty well. <sighs> yep, full of steam. Woohoo! Alright, open up. There we go. This is not going as smoothly. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh, it still has a lot of water in it. Hmm. You know what? Let's get... this strainer. Just like that. We will just put it out like that and strain it. Those beef juices on the bottom. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's hot. May need a second bowl here. Maybe. Just in case. Yeah, in none of the recipes that I saw did it ever explain how to actually get the pudding out of the pudding bag. So, we're going to do it my way. Let it all fall out. Oh gosh, that's hot! She whiz. Actually, what I'm going to try to do, I think if I turn it inside out. Ouch. There we go. It's not very pretty, but it smells... Ouch! Good. go. Peas porridge hot, peas porridge cold, peas porridge in the pot nine days old. Some like it hot, some like it cold, some like it in the pot nine days old. I would like it a little less hot than it is right now. Okay, we will wash that. <laughs> Put that out. Now, see, these were dried split peas, and now they are just this lovely, lovely mush right here. Look how delicious that is. All we're going to do to this is add this, some lovely butter.
some black pepper. We're just going to mush that all together. Give that a taste. Mmm. Still very hot, but really, really tasty. So there you have it, folks. It's a traditional Newfoundland jigs dinner with peas pudding. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. I had fun. I really like my new camera. Uh, if you decide to try this recipe for yourselves, um, you can go to my Facebook page or my Twitter, at GooseyJen, and post pictures. Let me know how it turned out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.